Good evening, everybody. This is Franz Calamari. You are here today. We are looking at a lovely battle replay of Field Command Napoleon, which is essentially the next iteration of uh, Darth Mod Hardcore Realism. There's been so much done to the mod since we last uh, spoke that they just decided to give it its own name and its own brand. And, you know, this is a mod compilation, yes. Like, it has elements from several different mods involved because at this point, the modding uh, state of Napoleon Total War has kind of reached... This very large gestalt body of tweaks, and everyone kind of brings all of all of the, you know elements from this mod into that mod, and that mod into this mod to give a different experience each time. And so at this point, FCN has enough, or should I say, what was formerly known as Darth Mod Hardcore, has enough individuality to the point where they thought, you know what, let's just give it its own brand. And so here we are, Darth Mod Hardcore Realism, now known as Field Command Napoleon. And I don't think I've given this version of the mod um its own battle report so this is uh, i guess the technically the first field command napoleon replay on the channel anyway today is july 1st 2022 it's a hot july day here in the lovely land of upstate new york i live not that far from the hudson river and it is a really swampy day it looks a little overcast we're due for some rain for sure and uh usually i have a beer but today i have a delightful Mm. unsweetened black iced tea from Harney and Sons, which is a wonderful tea company out in the Connecticut area. Shop local. To put it another way, the hot is, the heat is so hot, damn near reminds me of Mexico, to uh, give a very badly phrased version of what was said in the movie Gettysburg. And I'll bring that up today. Today is the 159th anniversary of the first battle, uh, I'm sorry, the first battle, Jesus, the first day of Gettysburg. Gettysburg was the largest battle ever fought on the continent of North America, 165,000 men. Uh, granted, it was smaller than some European battles that happened during this period, but it was a very significant event. It was probably the most high-tech uh, battle at that scale um, using these tactics. Probably, I would say, until something like Chickamauga or a later battle. Um, I think I've gotten that timeline right. Whatever. Anyway, Gettysburg was an incredible event. Um, I've had the pleasure of going to the battlefield a few times. It's probably one of my favorite uh, uh, parks to visit, I should say. Um, the town is wonderful. If you live anywhere uh, near Pennsylvania or you have the re uh, means to go to Pennsylvania to visit Gettysburg, you absolutely should. And um, give it a, a, a tour. Um, it really is a wild thing to think about how small of an area it is. Um, you can walk it in a day, really, less. Um, it's really less than 18 square miles. But uh, 50 and change thousand men uh, would lose um, some part of their health on it, be it their life, a limb, or would become injured as a result of the combat that happened there. So it is an incredibly sentimental spot on North American soil. And I think really everyone who can should pop by to have a visit. There are a lot of monuments there that have a lot of wonderful meaning that you don't really understand until you really look into what they mean. Um, regiments that had survivors after the war went and placed stones indicating the exact position of their regiment from the furthest point on the unit to the other furthest point in the unit so you know exactly how long the unit was and which direction it faced and who they were shooting at because the enemy did the same thing after the war too. So it really is a fascinating battlefield and I just wanted to take a moment out of this video to commemorate the fact that, you know, this was the high watermark of the Confederacy and it happened today, 159 years ago. Not that long, and I'll end uh, my Gettysburg discussion with two things. The first thing being, we think the Civil War happened so long ago, but my, uh, you know, my grandfather remembers um, when he was a very young man, young boy, really a child, seeing a Civil War veteran. And the last Civil War veteran only died, I think, just after World War II or something like that. And it really makes you think that uh, technically there are first-hand accounts of the Civil War still alive, right? Because if you want to treat those individual people that lived that long as artifacts, shall we say, of the Civil War, as the Civil War made manifest because they saw it, they lived it, then the people who are alive today, like my grandfather who saw them, would themselves have witnessed a piece of the Civil War and that would make them a first-hand account. So it really is a wild thing to consider just how close to history we are without realizing it. 
And with that, I'll go on to my last little announcement here, and the screen should cut away to something that I've been making. Um, I am producing my own war game. Um, I've decided to take the leap and produce a game where the smallest combat element is a brigade. It's going to be called um, Armchair Generals. And I've uh, decided to keep the channel name Franz Calamari when writing it. It's going to be a fun little pen name. Um, it'll be online uh, on an Etsy account um, for PDF download. I'll also have a published version on Amazon. So if you want to buy a hard copy of it, you can. But uh, I'll be doing some videos about the game later, telling you a, a little bit more about what it is and how it works and uh, how I designed it. Um, a little further down, we have a little more playtesting in, but uh, it's been something that I've been putting together for some time now, and I'm, I'm really glad to finally be putting uh, words on paper and uh, really kind of creating the game that I, I think should exist but doesn't. So, yeah, Armchair Generals. More to come. Anyway, let's talk about this battle. It's a big old 4v4. I've been zooming around here for a second. Um, this was a really interesting, I hate that phrase so much. I hate when people say interesting because it's such an empty phrase, right? What does interesting mean? Well, I'll, let me step back a second here and explain what I mean when I say this is an interesting battle. This battle has my attention because they tried to do a historical scenario. This is supposed to be the Battle of Austerlitz. And as you could see, um, the French army has a lot of seasoned units, right? All these chevrons here, you can kind of see it's a little small, um, but they've got a relatively small army. Um, I guess what they're trying to do here is represent several corps. And in the back, they have a large French contingent of very uh, well uh, seasoned troops, three chevrons apiece, led by a generic general staff um, with uh, uh, Mira as a cavalry commander. And then towards the front, they have another corps led by another gener uh, generic general staff, another generic general staff, and another generic general staff. So although there's no names, they are trying to represent a historical moment here. And I know I'm not giving the description of these armies the justice it so deserves, but frankly, I thought about it. They sent me the details to the historical scenario, and I think it's just worth saying the generals here, or the general information here, which is this is going to be a smaller army, a more veteran army than the enemy arrayed against them. And that will be an interesting test. And again, I hate interesting, but this truly is it going to be a very interesting test of quality of troop versus quantity of troop. It's worth mentioning that in Field Command Napoleon too, because this hasn't actually been said yet on this channel, um, they managed to unlock the unit cap on armies. So these armies probably seem really big, and that's because they are. This is just one army back here. They managed to make it so you can get 30 unit armies in multiplayer, which I didn't know you could do until recently, but yet here we are. So these armies are between 25 and 30 units apiece. So you're actually getting close to representing about like a, a, a one to two scale ratio of a core, right? So if a core back then was like between 10 to 15,000 men, and you're getting like between five to 7,000 men in the field per player, you're really not that far off of a level of abstraction from representing a one-to-one -one scale, which is pretty friggin' fascinating. So when, when before in earlier videos, when I was saying each of these units was a regiment, so like, you know, this regiment here, this regiment here, and this regiment here, um, I'm part of me is actually tempted to start referring to these as brigades because at this point of scale where we're talking about like six to 7,000 men per army, even, you know, quote, low as 5,000, end quote, that's still bigger than basically any other mod or version of this game I've played. So I'm going to play around with brigades uh, as my uh, unit reference term here. So, like, cavalry, I think I'll still call... Eh, I guess I could call them brigades still. I was going to call them squadrons, but I think cavalry brigades. Yeah, I think we'll just call every unit a brigade. And then the artillery will still be by battery. So let's see how that goes. It'll be a test, and we'll find out uh, how it feels. I'll take a sip of my iced tea here. I love iced tea. Goddamn. Again, a hot July day. It's a steamy day here in upstate New York, much like the Battle of Gettysburg. And uh, we're going to stay a little hydrated here. Usually I have a beer, but sometimes it's good to step back and have something a little more wholesome. So Austerlitz, the map looks awesome. This is an NTW3 map by the Lord's Modding Collective, and they did a damn fine job on it. Um, as you can see, we've got some roads here that kind of lead off to the sides. They're not terribly important except this junction here, which will allow speedy transit into 
I wish I could read uh, these names here. I believe that's... Mm -hmm. I believe it's our stat. I could be wrong, though. But yeah, anyway, the names of the towns aren't necessarily important. And I know as a uh, as a amateur historian and someone who has a passion for this sort of stuff, I should really know the names of it. And I don't mean to seem unprofessional, but I, I think the names are secondary here to just the overall terrain. If we zoom down, you can see these roads are almost sunken in some places, uh, especially here at this little cr uh, creek crossing. Um, but they kind of exist in these little mild depressions. Like if we really zoom down here, you could see that there's a rise to the uh, left and then there's a slight rise over here. And then as we go this way, you could see that the elevation climbs a little bit more that way. And then if we go over here onto this road, it's pretty flat, but I would argue that the ground actually swells up in that direction. You can kind of see that there. That's the upswell. So the enemy on this side has kind of a perpetual raise in elevation that the French army is going to have to move up. And they also have the advantage of having this town that can be pretty heavily fortified with probably close to a thousand men. Uh, we're looking at 500, 450 plus 200, that's 650 plus another 200, 850-ish men. That's That can be turned into a pretty big problem. And then also on this flank here, you do have some really nice hills to hit the advancing French and then on the other side, you also have another hill. And I would even say this is a better hill because you could put troops down in this little sunken road here. Not to get all civil worry today, I swear I'm not intending it. But you can put troops in this little uh, depression here and then fire overhead. And if you had a howitzer, you could put it in here and even just shoot up. And your left flank is covered by a big old farmhouse that you can put uh, about a brigade and a garrison. And finally, you could hypothetically put a battery over here if you want to throw a really wide flank and force the French to assault up a, um, or rather across a river that doesn't appear to have a crossing here. So they would have to seize this town, get this bridge, and then go up. So this could become a pretty uh, big problem over here if um, the enemy team decides to counterattack in some way, shape, or form. But if we look at their deployments, it looks like we've got a sizable enemy presence being deployed directly in front of the French, so it'll get hot quick. We've got a right wing here, we have a reserve here, and then we have a secondary reserve. So it looks like there's two armies that will basically be deployed. Um, one of them is going to kind of be forced to deploy into co uh, uh, from column into line, because if you look at how their setup is, they don't have um, their widest front facing the French. They have their narrowest, so they'll be kind of forced to march onto the field. And the French are really concentrated, poised to kind of steamroll up this road, and granted they can be caught by this player who can kind of have the, his left wing fall in, I shouldn't gender them, their left wing fall in and envelop the French and this one here and then this player can fall in. So if you're the French team, you got to really be thinking about what you want to do. Um, you could bum rush to your front and try to slam this player immediately, but you're risking envelopment from the right and eventually the left and reinforcement from here. So you'd have to be really quick and sharp about seizing it. And also not for nothing, but then you'd be caught in a little bit of a bowl here. You could see the ridge around the area. If it were me, I don't know what I would do here. Let me just take an assessment. Um, I personally always say um, go for the ground first and then win the game. Um, I think the best thing to do is probably fall upon the most isolated player uh, who's going to be reinforced last and try to go for a defeat in detail. Um, this player is really far back. Uh, this guy's close and this guy's close. So I would say this wing is probably the weakest. And I would even make the argument can be most easily deployed upon because look at all this open field here versus here you're going to walk through this uh, river area with these trees. You could go left and deploy. Um, you'd be on a bit of a depression though, so the enemy would be on the high ground able to shoot forward. But you would have this town to kind of break up any sort of an enemy advance. It's going to be a tough one for the French. I'm not terribly sure where the best ground is. And then if we look at the points on the map, the French will control one, two, three, four points automatically. The enemy team will control one, two, three, four, five, possibly. So really, this point here is very important because if the French can slim over here onto this side and grab this, then they'll immediately have uh, control over all the points. Or, I'm sorry, a majority of the points. And that could really change things up. So let's press play. Let's see how they deploy, and we'll take a look at their armies as they're doing it because I've been speaking for quite a while. To the front, whoever this player is, they've got a grand battery, which is always an interesting, as I zoom through the map, always an interesting unit and again i say interesting but i mean it in this case specifically because you never really know where what a grand battery is going to do um it looks like what he's pondering 
if you want to take that click as an indication, is maybe throwing it on this hill, but that's conjecture. So they've got a lot of really uh, fun infantry with the Franco-Egyptian as well as the uh, foot dragoons. I should say dismounted dragoons. Um, dismounted dragoons are a curious unit because they have decent melee stats, but I don't think they can form square and they don't really have a good charge bonus. So they, they're good for holding down a house, but I don't know. As we zoom over here, and as I sip my tea, we have a lovely attack column with three chevrons. That's a very dangerous thing because with three chevrons, an attack column is going to be very hard to route. They're putting old guard in this house immediately, so you could see there's a bit of a thought here. They have unlimbered their gun. What I dislike about this is if you look at where the gun is, they can't really shoot up on this ridge line. They can only shoot to the right or to the front, and then there's a little rise here that if this was real life, it wouldn't be too much of a problem, but because the AI in Napoleon is stupid, it may ricochet off this little ridge here. If I were this player, I'd maybe deploy it front and right. Um, and that would also have the added benefit of putting them kind of clear of, of, of uh, uh, this rise so they could fire a canister into this river if the enemy comes danger close. But anyway, not to criticize their placement immediately. That's, you know, a grand battery, no matter where you put it, is, is a lot of tubes to point in one direction and is always going to be a problem no matter what for whoever's trying to deal with it because the amount of firepower, even if badly positioned by itself, has a quality. Meanwhile, behind them, um, another veteran army, a lot of foreign regiments slash brigades, depending on how we want to refer to them. A lot of Irish. They've got, oh, they've got old guard uh, Grenadier Cavalry. Lovely uniform. Ah, Carabineers up here. That's a great unit, specifically because of the rapid firing carbine. Another assault column, do I see? Yeah, another assault column. A lot of uh, assault columns in the French army. Some conscripts, that's nice. Very seasoned conscripts, too. Very fun unit because they can't form square. Uh, some chasseurs will give them mobility. Another assault. Do I see two assault columns? Yeah, two assault columns. Wow, that's almost 600 men. Actually, that's 620 men. Yeesh. Wow, wow, wow. They have another light infantry unit, do I see? Yeah, six, they have a lot of light infantry in the second line here. Uh, and a th oh, Okay, yeah. So, oh, and a marine battalion. Cool, and Miraz, Mira, a clone of Mira as well. And in the back, what are we looking at? Artillery at PA, very nice. And a bunch of fusiliers. I don't think I see any assault columns back here. Um, I do see another carabiner at PA unit. Old guard, too, so another regiment from the old guard. Always a good time. Just a lot, a lot of infantry. And uh, this is kind of the fun thing about this version of the mod is the meta has definitely swung towards huge, huge, huge armies, right? Um, it's not about individual units. It's just about having the maneuver elements and the options. And we'll fast forward to get this game rolling. So I do kind of like the fact that we're not seeing a lot of named units. We're seeing assaulting and peppering of them, but we're not just seeing kind of alphabet soup of units. We're seeing a lot of line and generic line units, which is always fun. Really curious to see what the enemy does here. Okay, let's see. So in front, this will be, uh, by the way, the Russians and the Austrians, lest I forget. So we've got some, I'm sorry, the Prussians and the Austrians, Prussians and Austrians, right? With Austerlitz. I guess it's a fully Prussian army. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. Uh-oh. Battery there immediately opening up on the French. Whoa. Where do those shells go? Sure hope it didn't hit anything expensive because they're all bundled up right now, so. Looks like they got lucky in that some of the shells, or uh, balls ricocheted. Grand Battery also opened up, which is nice. Wish I caught that. It was so quick. There's a bit of a gentleman's code in these sort of games where uh, when you unlimber your guns from the start, they're on fire at will, so you have to be really careful to not immediately snipe the enemy general. So we've got some Prussian Schützen moving up to the river. How much of the enemy is visible? Or how much of the French are visible? So, just the front line. Uh, everything else is largely hidden. However, the Prussians are beginning to come into view, and I'm sure as they come into view, the rest of the French will come in. I highly doubt they're going to stay hidden for long. The game is a little laggy right now, purely because we probably have close to like 30 to 40,000 men in the field. Um, but I'm sure that will get better as time goes on. 
Fusiliers are really useful in this version of the mod, not because of their shooting stats, but specifically because of how quickly they can march. They're a really good reconnaissance and forward vanguard. Okay, so it looks like the reserve is going to deploy on the right, and they will make a play for this objective. It's possible that the French... Yeah, so it looks like they're going to overload on the right. Cool. So it, it looks to be... Uh, hold the center, counter battery here with the 8-pound gun the eight pound battery and then overload the right. It is my understanding that the Prussians have a, a vastly larger army in this uh, replay and that was specifically to kind of represent the quality versus quantity aspect of this match. Hmm, deployment of stakes, land bear Ulans, a cheap Ulan unit but a good Ulan unit. We've got Blucher on the right wing. We've got a generic general staff, another, oh, Scharnhorst in the center. Okay, so two, two uh, basically general staff off to the sides, and then Blucher on the right wing, Scharnhorst holding the center. Scharnhorst, not knowing who the player is, I'll just refer to the center Prussian uh, division or slash core as Scharnhorst, has a great position, specifically because he's got this river and this swampy forest to break up any sort of an attack made on his town here. This is a really hard point. I don't know if the French could seize this. Um, especially knowing that they have guns positioned here on the high ground looking down. This is a great little spot. Kind of sucks because you've got this depression that can shield in advance by the French. Um, but once they come up and over and crest, they can really get blasted to pieces. Grand Battery. Yeesh. wonder if they're hitting anything. Oh, I guess so. That's some dead Prussians. Uh, those look to be regular old Fusiliers. Oh yeah, there they are, walking into view. Four, I saw four bodies. I guess it was that, that uh, brigade that got slammed. And meanwhile, we have a small division of troops marching this way. Here's the Chassers. That light infantry movement speed really making a difference. You could see the difference in advance rate. This player is um, in a bit of a pickle because... Any French balls that overshoot could potentially land in their line here, so it's a bit of a problem for them. Ooh, brigades walking. Wow, there. Look at all that. You could see the. If I zoom out, you can see the piles of bodies. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. Jeez, that grand battery's really been doing work already. Let's see what the casualties are. 230 fresh, 230 fresh, 230 fresh, 226. So it looks like they're missing the front, but they're hitting the reserves behind that are hidden right now. That's what I mean. The grand battery, no matter what, it's gonna hit. It's it's could be in a bad spot, no matter what. Good spot, bad spot, it will hurt someone. Grand battery is a uh, just a ton of twelve pound guns. Let's see if they're going through anyone. Looks like it did there. I'm trying to spot. This is dangerous, too. He's moving inflate. A single ball could rip through this and go through all the ranks. Oh, yeah. He's targeting this unit, so. This is what I meant, by the way. It's a little low. You can see where the uh, the cannons are ricocheting off the ground here. And that's causing an accuracy. And that setback by maybe 30 to 40 feet could really make a difference. Could have probably killed a, f a few more dozen Prussians by now. Oh, man. The French left is being hammered. Oh, but it's missing. And it is hitting the French behind them, though. This is the problem when you're so clumped. You just get pretty heavy casualties. And he's going to unlimber, I guess. The game will get smoother as uh, casualties mount. Yeah, the French player back here is having a rough time because instead of walking around the forest and going this way and only having to cut across a creek once, he's walking the long way through the forest. That's a pretty big problem because it's going to delay him. Now, granted, they're getting in the line, so it's not too much, but this Prussian reserve is definitely going to come online uh, before the other half of this French corps catches up. And meanwhile, this guy is marching in line of battle across a very open field, and while that's technically fine, his left is going to start hitting these woods, and he's got his artillery over here as well. Um, he should collapse and condense and keep the army totally out in the open. So we're going to see some movement problems already in the French. 
The Prussians will outshoot them, but the French will outstab the Prussians. Oh, so the French are moving to threaten this town here. Which is a very real threat because this is a nice little rise and the town is in a depression. So they could hypothetically throw some troops over here. And it looks like they're in the process of doing so. Yep. Looks like they're sending a division this way. Uh, I should start clarifying my terms, by the way, because if we're going to refer to the units as... Uh, ooh, cheeky square. Got a chasseurs. If we're going to start referring to these uh, units as brigades, then we should also clarify what our scale is going to be. Several brigades together is a division. Several divisions together are a core. So um, I will consider a division to be about, I would say, three to five regiments. So this right here, you know, one, two, three, four, five, I would consider this to be a division. I would say these three by themselves could be a little division. This could be a division, I mean, you know. At this point, you know, it's Napoleon Total War, so the abstraction is never going to be totally accurate to history. So it really doesn't matter, but I'm trying to be as close to realistic as possible for the sake of immersion. Uh, the French player here has realized his error in placement. It looks like he's moving onto the ground that he should have been on. I would even say a little further, kind of in line with this tree. This is a dangerous maneuver here because if you look, it doesn't seem that there are cavalry supporting. Um, this is an opportunity for the Prussian player to squeeze out. That Grand Battery, if they have uh, light cavalry nearby, even perhaps heavy cavalry could squeak it. Very dangerous move. This regiment of Hussars and that regiment of uh, Chevalier de la Garde are in the wrong spot. They should be here backing up that battery. And this Prussian player definitely has a window of opportunity, but it looks like they're not going to be able to exploit it. However, they are going to get some maneuver, uh, some countermarching off before shit really hits the fan and that battery deploys. Oh, it looks like they are going to that forward spot. Oh, great. Yeah, this is where they should have been. Yeah. Oh, look at that clear field of fire. Oh, yeah. Do I see stakes? Yes, I do. So it looks like the Prussians are fortifying their center. Scharnhorst overseeing from the wood line. Yeah, this is a great spot. Carabineer is up here. Ooh, did the officer just get nailed? Oh, I guess he was wounded but survived. Anyway, uh, they'll win this firefight because they are so close. Well, until the musketeers open out. Now they're not. Slow-mo it here. Look at that like, line extension. Yeah, so what I would assume is happening right now is the French are over... Overextending the Prussians. Opportunity lost here, perhaps. I would say an aggressive thrust by the French onto this flank could force the Prussians to pull back to this town, and that would perhaps stymie this reserve from coming in. There's a lot of open space that they're giving, and it's perhaps because they're worried about overextending themselves. If this flank moves forward, their right would be out in the open for this one to hit. But I would dare say that pushing this army back and buying time and space for this core to come up is worth it because that doesn't mean you have to stay there you could push up and then fall back in a line with this right wing as it comes in to meet this army here and that would force the enemy to waste valuable time redeploying and give more time to this core to fall in so i would say this is a bit of a lost opportunity and of course the moment i say it this player does it well done the first of the quality versus quantity tests multiple lines with a lot of experience walking into um, not so seasoned troops and perhaps some of that lack of uh, experience is showing here because you've got Sleeves and Schutzen not really doing terribly much damage to the enemy to their front. Um, getting off some pretty relatively free shots with rifles and only killing about half a dozen men. Now granted, if we just scale this up, that actually equates to several dozen men, but like in game terms. Oh, uh, interesting. The Russians on this flank. How did I miss this? Wow, they're going to get... A lot over here. So I guess the Russians marched this way instead of head-on catching out the French left. Oh, man. I guess he unlimbered the guns just in time. He's running them into the square. Man, I wish this was smooth. That's my only grape. Now, the guns are routing. How many men have they lost? 11? They could come back. They could come back. They're within friendly lines. The general's nearby. He is ra he's rallying. Those guns may very well come back, depending. Those life of SARS are going to go. Yeah. 
Wow, yeah. Look at this. Great, so the Prussians dividing their force. I w it looks like the majority is actually going to the left, which is really good because what that means is he's falling upon a part of the French army that is not fully in line, whereas here on the right, it looks like they're ready. On the left, they're not quite, and he has the high ground. He's going to get in the line first. Yes, he's taking casualties by maneuver maneuvering in the face of an enemy that's deployed, but uh, the reserves are still coming up the road. In fact, I w they have to cross a creek is what it looks like. Let's play it out. Oh, that's a great little volley. Sir! Sir! Our general is under attack! Yeah, some, some confusion here on the French left. Now they've got to redeploy, seeing how Blucher, being a cheeky little bugger, has given the slip so the French right is just there unnecessarily to connect the line. We have a general assault upon the front of the Prussians. Yeah, here comes a good flank, really weakening this musketeer unit. This brigade, I should say. What do we have? Some six-pound artillery? Yeah, that's a good battery size. Yeah, see, I would say this flank happened a little bit too late, maybe, because... Uh... Wow, that was really cool to watch, all that. Man, they're really chewing up. Jesus. Whoa, Nelly. Oh, hold on a second. We're not getting the full sound. There we go. Oh, yeah. It's getting a little smoother as casualties mount. It's an expensive unit to have on the front line, the Braves. That's a pretty ragged brigade, though, on the corner. This, uh, the, the French right is maneuvering in the face of the enemy, which is formed. I don't know if this is the wisest idea. It looks like the Prussians on the left are going to have the advantage here, especially once they open fire in about two seconds. Oh, the attack hall is about to eat it. Whoa! Jesus. Looks like the French... I missed the charge here, but that's all right. Using numbers here of trying to overwhelm the Prussians. It looks like they may break through that line. On the left, how are we doing? Yeah, the Prussians under Blucher. Pulling the unexpected move of hitting the French flank. And... Uh, Doing a really good job. This is a dangerous situation. This French player will not have enough men online to deal with it. Um, all the Prussians need to do is exactly that. Just fire forward. This player's got their old guard deployed on the front line. A lot of expensive units filling holes. These are chunky units too, so they're not getting their full firepower. And the Prussians can just sit here and blast away. Holding the French uh, at bay. This is a dangerous situation that's creating moments like this, too, where there are holes in the line and you can have enemy cavalry moving into it. In the center, how are we doing? French have pushed back the Prussians to their reserve lines, although the Prussians doing a good job keeping Scharnhorst nearby, so they're not suffering uh, from a rout, but they are certainly suffering um, casualties from the bayonet, although the French did not get that for free. Commitment in the center. Prussians deployed in the long, thin lines to maximize their firepower, but I think it's just attrition. And also, too, these are very seasoned units firing into not quite a seasoned units. So if we look at the map here, we can see that the French are essentially forming out an L shape. Grand Battery is about to be threatened by some Landwehr Uhlans. Get the gun, get the crews off the guns and throw them in squares now while you have a chance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I guess he's pulling back. I don't know if the battery's even been firing. Oh, what he may be doing is trying to force these guys to form square. Actually, the Dragoons at PA might not even be able to form square.
Whoop, shit. Hold on. Let's catch that charge. I hate that so much with the zooming through the map thing. Oh, man. Oh, perfect timing. Oh, they can form square. Interesting. So some Ulans will lose their life, but it looks like they did collapse into the side of the square. Even if compelling a unit to form square like this is a good idea, because then what it means is there's a lull in the shooting on their side, and then your, your men can get a free volley off. Like that. Reduces the firepower present by 25%. Oh, man! Charging the conscripts in the back. Yeesh. Very strange thing here. The Prussians are in line with the French. I suppose the Grand Battery is shooting, I guess, over the head. Yeah, using the depression. Yeah. Shooting this way. How are we doing on the right? Yeah, the French uh, veterancy is, is paying dividends. Because they're winning the firefight on this side. But again, they may not have as many men. Curious to know if this is the entirety of the Russian or er, Prussian army on this side. It looks like there's more stuff coming out. Meanwhile, the French Reserve Corps is countermarching. So it looks like they've... Oh, I guess they were over here and now they... Oh, so they marched up and then now they're going left. So it looks like what the French are doing is they're going to try to relieve their left. That is being hammered by Blucher. Yeah, Blucher's team... Blucher's uh, corps is definitely... Bending the enemy over a barrel right now. And they have plenty of reserves and good troops as well. Some veteran musketeers in the back. Actually, Blucher's whole division, whole corps, is a uh, veteran. So, a relatively even fight. A glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Some confusion here looks like deploying in the face of an enemy that's able to fire. I I don't know if this is the wisest idea. Perhaps this player should pull back, reform, and then march forward. Unnecessary casualties on that side. It seems the lines have adjusted. A lull in the fighting, so it seems. Probably just sitting right outside of musket range. Everyone's loaded now. Letting the fighting on the right keep going. French playing a war of attrition. Relying on their better shooting ability to uh, whittle down the Prussians. Prussians deciding to die here. I'm not sure if this is the best uh, use of manpower. You could see the difference in, uh, in casualties here. French definitely suffering, but you could see the Prussians are, are... I mean, look at this line. There's holes in it. It's ragged. Just want to slow-mo it for a second, make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, forcing a square with Mira, and then... Oh, it looks like we're going to do a bayonet charge here. There it is. Oh, man. Wow. Oh! How many casualties are you suffering here? 75, said two men dead. And the G's, not that many. Oh, now they're starting to fall. Yeah, that was a good, that was a great tactic by whoever that French player was. Allowed the, the uh, Egyptian brigade, shall we say, to uh, connect with the enemy. We're out them with the bayonet. Killed a lot of them. That was really, really good. That's a great tactic. And now we're seeing a break. Collapse of the Prussian left. Not for free, though. The center is holding under significant artillery fire. The problem, though, is on the French left. And, of course, when I say... Oh, oh it looks like the Prussians are, are pulling the opposite. They're charging into melee. Life Grenadier is committing. It's a punchy unit. Old guard being pulled out of action. No, no, go, staying in action. Oh, this is just a brawl on this flank. French cavalry struggling to find a place to be. Makes sense, though, because you've got the uh, cuirassier here. You've got the musketeers here. Committal of this uh, cavalry really could be a waste. Yeah, this uh, Blucher is definitely screwing with the French left. Blucher, 
While the Prussian left is precarious, the Prussian right is strong in the center. Is holding. Although, it looks like now, with this French player being so far extended, and I realize this is an objective, so not criticizing the decision, but this gap in the line is allowing the French left to be exploited. And now we're seeing some reserves being committed. Ooh, Jesus. I wonder why this unit isn't firing. Seems fighting has commenced again in the center. We've got a rotation of units walking in fresh reserves, but it looks like the French don't really have reserves. They're committing everything. There's some small reserves. But it looks like they're mostly deployed in line. And this is the curious thing, right? Is uh, This is the difference between quality versus quantity. Look at how much they have to extend their line to match the Prussians. Meanwhile, the French on the left are getting cracked, actually, by the Prussians. French firing volleys <laughs> to try to deal with this. Jesus. Uh, curious thing, because uh, while the French are winning these small victories here, the right, for example, cracking it in, look at the reserves the Prussians have. There's nothing behind the French, but there's all this stuff behind the Prussians. This is a thin blue line versus a thin Prussian blue line. And you could see it in, in this alone, right? Like, look at the single line of flags, really. And yeah, okay, you could say these are some, but these are all really depleted units that are being rotated out of the line of battle with a few exceptions. Um, oof, that was a volley. Wow. Oh, it looks like we're witnessing a French charge. They're going against an angle here. Let's zoom over to this. Oh, some Prussian columns coming out of the woods. Attack column hitting the fusiliers. Prussian fusiliers are not that good in melee, so... While that is indeed a janky charge... Oh, Jesus. This is so weird. I don't know what's happening. Oh, this is a weird, weird melee. This is confusion in the, in the lines is what this is. But yeah, you can see in the thin ranks here, the French are totally online, and the Prussians have a bunch of stuff in reserve, and now they're going to exploit this gap between the armies and potentially encircle this French unit over here. Very bloody fight here on the left, fighting tooth and nail. The French appear, appear to be coming out for the better on this flank, but the Prussians do have a lot of weight, and again, there are no reserves. I think it's just the quality of the troops holding it down. Forming a square here to fire in both directions. A very desperate move. Meanwhile, this French this French core would be, I guess, the reserve, you could say. So they have a totally fresh core coming on line, and boy, do they need it, because this gap here is a problem, and it looks like that core is going to be committed to be the, pr the uh, answer to that. And that might be a benefit to them, because if you think about it, if the Prussians are going to advance into here and kind of try to make a breakthrough... Wow, that's a bad spot to be in. Um, the Prussians are going to try to make a breakthrough here and split and force a way between these two armies. Um, this core could just come through here and slam through all of this. So we'll, we'll see. This might end up being a reversal on the part of the Prussians in a second. Over here on the left, how are we looking? Um, the French definitely in strength here. They've got everything online again, so no reserves. And the Prussians are reforming their lines after suffering the casualties they have. They've got guns nearby that are able to shoot overhead, which is kind of cool. Let's see where they're firing. Looks like in that direction there. Yeah, the Prussians maybe would be better served falling back to their guns using canister, redeploying this battery here, letting these lines fall back. A uh, very costly maneuver on that side. But they could overextend the French flank here is what it looks like is happening. Just depends on how quickly this reserve brigade, uh, division can come into line. Ooh, big old French charge. Cracking the center. But look at how much they've got in reserve. I don't know if this is the right expenditure of energy here. Creating a hole, yes. Routing uh, the enemy, yes. Shattering, even. Yeah, it looks like this player is going to retreat. So where has this battle gone so far? Well, the French walked up and they attempted to form a line of battle here. And you could see where the Prussians are and what they've been doing. So the Prussians, we zoom out here have swept up the right flank. Blucher surprising the French left by denying battle frontally 
but rather splitting essentially effectively the Prussian army and going right. While there was a temporary gap, doing so caught the French off guard here and has compelled the French Reserve Corps to countermarch, wasting valuable time that could have been spent getting to the right and securing this point on the right to march over here and reinforce the French left. Oh, it looks like the uh, Lutzow Freikorps finally nailed that Grand Battery. Good for them. Good for them. That's a really big deal because that Grand Battery... When you fire a canister out of a Grand Battery, that's, uh, that, that alone could just determine the center. This center was never going to break if that Grand Battery was there, so doing so really just gave them a huge opportunity. And with the amount of reserves that the Prussians have in the center, they could very well poke a massive hole in the French. Especially considering how much uh, the French have invested here. General is so close to the battle. Are they just war blobbing their way forward? Jesus. And uh, interestingly enough, the reserve corps is now no longer hidden, as you can see. Parts of it are like this, but the uh, forward elements have come into view of the Prussians. From their point of view, it would be basically a few of these uh, brigades um, that are visible, and some would still be hidden, so... Yeah, look at this. You can see again, uh, this looks like it's pretty mean for the French, but a lot of these uh, brigades are attrited. Oh, wait, hold on. Are they? No, this looks to be fresh reserves. Mostly. 50% casualties from these two brigades. Mostly fresh here of these three. More than, f about 50% here, and then some attrition here. B very heavy attrition here. So, a mixed bag of reserves, but reserves nonetheless. Meanwhile, the French have really nothing, putting everything on the line. Deftly maneuvering to make the most of it. And they are holding on to the right. They have an attack column that's attrited, but still present on the right. I'm not seeing much artillery on, on the side of the French. They do have a reserve of, of this battery, which would be 12 pounders. This is actually guard artillery, which is good. Pulling back, staying in the heights, forcing the Prussians to cross the creek if they really want this town. Um, this is worth one point, 200 man slot. I would put these Westphalians into this house and make them come for it. You've got these low walls that could potentially be good, angled in an awkward way, but you could really screw someone up. This forest will, this, uh, this creek area will break up an attack and this will slow it down. So this is a very strong defensive position for the French left. This was a good fallback point. By overextending this way too, they can ensure that they're going to force the Prussians to come at them head on. And it looks like Blucher is going to see that and think better of it. Bearing in mind, this town is not worth anything. That's the prize. So the French locking it down, the reserve corps coming in. But the center is weak. The center has been repulsed, really. Like, it looks like they're running out of gas. What they're going to do is fall back in the interest of force preservation. Where is this arrow coming from? That's weird. Huh. Anyway. Yeah, so now the Prussians can mount a counterattack and perhaps crack this. French on this flank, doing well. A lot of the army is still here. Attrited, 50% casualties in a lot of these men. No artillery. They do have cavalry. They've got a lot of good infantry. A very healthy right flank. Looks like what they're going to do is anchor on this house, putting one or two brigades in there, perhaps, to garrison the town. Problem is the town, the objective, is on this side of the river. And the French want to be on this side. If this house was over here, this would be a very big problem for the Prussians. But the Prussians have a lot of men. They've got artillery. This could be an issue. So the big question is, can the French effect a breakthrough on this sector of the battlefield? Because it looks like the, French, uh, the Prussian reserves are placed very specifically in the center. And over here, it looks like they've all been deployed. But it looks like the Prussian reserves are basically here in this area. So there is nothing really back here, with the exception of a, a, an elite brigade. Wow. Yeah, it's getting a little smoother. unintentionally following a wave of ramrods.
They might be just out of range. No, they're not. <laughs> ah, the core is engaged. You know, the reserve corps, look at all these reinforcements coming online. This could really be a game changer for the French. Now the Prussians got to be careful because if they're too aggressive, they could overcommit here and not have anything to throw over here. And this is all fresh. I mean, yeah, some casualties, but I mean, negligible losses at this point. Um, they can really file into the right as they are doing, as you can see, and kind of relieve this force, which can pull back take a moment and have a breather, but it looks like the Prussians don't really have anything to swap in. It does look like they are redeploying some reserves to this side to position them in the event of nece necessity, and it looks like that event is swiftly approaching, as we could see. Very unfortunate circumstance for the French, because the lack of artillery is really hurting them right now. If they had guns positioned on this hill, a single battery on this hill could do a lot of good. Look at that prime target right over the rooftops of this village, especially here silhouetted against the sky. Carabineers up PA, I guess, holding, holding the far, <laughs> pulling picket duty on the far side. A lull in the fighting on the right flank and a lull in the center. And now most of the action is in the left part of the battlefield. You can see the salient being formed here. Yeah, yeah, that reserve corps blasting a hole in. I would even make the argument they could pop, probably lead a bayonet charge and carry this position forward. Yeah, Prussians pulling back. Tough nut, tough nut to crack. Blucher's men. Pressing forward here. It's a more even fight on this side for, in terms of a firefight because these Prussians have a little more experience than their allies and so they're able to kind of deal as much damage as they're given. But uh, it's still a problem. Not a lot of artillery in this game and I think that's... Oh wait, oh, did the French cavalry get around? Are they going for Blucher? Oh, I guess they are, but he's got Cuirassier that he's... <laughs> a musketeer battalion. A company, really. Oh, I see what they're doing. A, a bunch of general staffs are being rushed, as well as that 12-pound uh, battery. But that battery, I would even argue, is safe, specifically because to get to it, they've got to run the gauntlet. Oh, but that general isn't. That's not good. This could be game-determining. Although, luckily for this general, um, the way the general is positioned, it looks like he's in the front rank. Yeah, see that plume right there? I believe that's the general, and that means that he's really not going to be engaged in combat as he runs back into combat. Here we go. He might escape. This is why the way your general staff is facing is so important. And it looks like this unit is going to open fire. Let's see if this Hussar unit gets taken out as they run in front. I hope so. Come on. Oh, shit. There goes that battery. Oh, man. These Brunswickers trying to figure out whether or not they should risk friendly fire to save the general and the gun or not. Oh, <laughs> looks like... Oh, man. Oh, there's going to be a lot of friendly fire here. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, friendly fire. Yeah, because they they, they're both firing inwards this way, so you're going to have a crossfire. Yeesh. That was a clever play by this uh, French player here. They're gonna, they traded that unit to displace a general, distract that target, and take out a battery and force friendly fire. Sheesh. Meanwhile, in the center, what's going on here? French... Oh, the reserves. Yeah, the reserve corps is pulling up. They've deployed in a line of battle and allowed the French uh, corps in the center to condense. Getting a small breakthrough here. Looks like they're leading a counter uh, a counterattack again. To quote Gettysburg, reform and try again. And that's damn well what they're doing, so it seems. Speaking of, uh, they're coming out with a Civil War version of this mod, and I cannot flipping wait. Because to me, that is the epitome of uh, maneuver and strategy in this uh, time period. Because right now, it's kind of like... All over the place, you've got Curacia, you've got Asars, you've got Landver, all this other stuff. It's like, look, all that matters is where's the infantry going? How seasoned is it? Is it well equipped? Is it well led? You know, you don't have to sit here and faff about with all these different unit types. It's like, look, it's an infantry brigade, what do you want, you know? So I'm personally excited for that because these games are going to be a lot more about maneuver and uh, strategy than they're about unit stats. So anyway, yeah, Civil War version coming out and then I'll be able to quote Gettysburg and all, all sorts of other movies like Glory to My Heart's Delight. So bottom of the uh, bottom of the half hour into the game right now, how are we looking on points? 
French have one, two, three, uh, four. They're holding this house still. Five, the French are winning on points. It's a tenuous grasp, though. They've got a small reserve of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six brigades. Sorry, seven brigades, uh, plus a battery that's 25% depleted. Um, so they've effectively got a division or two in reserve, but overall committed. Um, the left is pretty well attrited. Prussians are definitely healthy. They've got a lot of numbers. The French don't even have artillery. We're seeing some success on the on the on the, uh, on the part of the French in the center here, who are really trying to poke a hole in the Prussian line. I don't know if it's the best usage, though. Um, although I could see why this player is doing it, because the Prussians have pulled up a six-pound battery in the line of battle, and with uh, three guns, woo, bad time to be these guys. Um, with three guns embedded in the line of battle, the Prussians can just basically load a uh, canister and point <laughs> point towards enemy, basically. But uh, these lines are looking pretty thin, and uh, while the French were repulsed in the center, the French are actually looking pretty healthy by comparison. But this is scary. Look at how many Prussians are deployed on the right here. Uh, part of me wonders if this is a, pro a, a, a mistake on the part of the Prussians. And, of course, as is tradition, the moment I say things, the uh, team acts on it. The Prussians may have been able to carry this position faster if they had gone up. Now, I know what they're doing. They're doing what I, the French should have been doing, which is they're going to deploy a gun on these heights, a battery on these heights, which is a, a, a very intelligent move. It's a great position because look at the enfilade offered by this. You've got the whole French army basically in a line here. A single cannonball can skip down this or even down this. This is a great spot. But they probably could have rushed this farmhouse and taken it with the bayonet and even perhaps carried this hill using this road to march in before this uh, these, this uh, little, I guess, demi-division, whatever you want to call it, uh, got into position. So sluggishness on the part of the Russians, oh, geez, part of the Prussians. And now they're going to take more casualties than necessary going in. Uh, another mistake, too, is the general is not in the melee. So this musketeer unit might break on impact, especially fighting a three-chevron unit. We'll see. Yeah, they look like they're going to rout. In the center, meanwhile, the French. Ooh, boy. Oh, man. Putting in Murat to try to take out that six-pound gun battery, I guess. This conscript unit eating lead on the way in. Whoa, that's a... Wow, this is such a confusing situation right now. Oh, man. I feel bad for everybody involved in this. Charging through the routing unit. Can't blame them. The unit's routed. Doesn't matter. Mira will finish off that battery. Very good use of... Uh, oh, did he route? Oh, man. He must have routed from friendly fire in the presence of the battery. They might get... Oh, man. Oh, man. That's not good. This French player... Oh, I'd be seething. We're going to see some pretty mean canister point blank here. That was really the opportunity. I would have even gone so far as to say maybe throwing the general in that would have been a good idea as well. Now we're really going to see some carnage. On the left, how are we doing? Let's pause it for a second. I don't want to miss anything. It looks like we're seeing a pretty aggressive play on the part of the French on the left here. Blucher is going to stay here to try to re, uh, shore up that side. But again, there's a bit of a misplaced reserve going on. Uh, the Litsoff Rikor could be over here blocking the Kirasier with infantry support, keeping Blucher safe, but they're not, so this is going to be a threat profile on the left. Over here, the reserves have been redeployed on the part of the Prussians, robbing the French Reserve Corps the opportunity to create a breakthrough here, so they've reinforced part of their line. In the center, the six-pound battery looks to be deciding uh, control over this uh, uh, creek, or I guess uh, riverbed. Over here, the French are pulling back, consolidating their line. And indeed, you do have this uh, assault col this uh, attack column hunkering down, fortifying this house. And I would even say maybe throwing another uh, unit into the house to stabilize it even more would be great. Uh, the Prussians are indeed going to be deploying the six-pound battery here and again. Excellent position. Perfect position for this battery. This player should feel good about putting it there. Um, but there is a small French force here guarding the river crossing. Fun game, not decided quite just yet. A lot hangs in the balance. It's very precarious here in the center. They do have some reserves they're pulling up. This looks to be probably part of the reserve core. Um, French guns here finally opening up. I'm sure the French are glad to have some artillery support. How does their angle look? Uh, pretty good. If they can shoot here, they'll hit a double whammy. But if you're the Prussian player, you probably feel pretty good because I think the Prussians still have a lot of their artillery. Yeah, they've got a full 
Yeah, ooh, only two guns. Oh, wow, two have been dismounted. Jeez, it's probably by the artillery up here. I would assume there's counter-battery fire coming from there. Um, two 12-pound guns firing down the French line, so they're going to get bonus kills if they can manage to hit. Looks like it's a clear target. Overall, the game is very much in the air. Uh, this flank is not yet decided. It's going to come down to skill, but it looks like the French are definitely weakening it. Let's press play. Ooh, that's the canister. Yeah, look at that. Yeesh. And the general's behind that, too. Maybe it's worth dismounting the general so he doesn't need a canister. When you dismount him, it means that, you know, the men in front of him can essentially body block bullets. Kind of morbid, but, I mean, one must do what one must do. Yeah, the Prussians could poke a hole in here if they really wanted to. Again, they got to charge across this creek, and that could really screw them up. So we're... Oh. Oof. Whoa. You can hear whistling through the air. Hmm, yeah. Yeah. Really, really depends on uh, what happens here. This is a this is there's nothing here. Well, actually no, we're going to see the commitment of 3. Okay, yeah, so that divert that division is going to be marched into combat. Now again, this goes back to my old principle, which is uh, now we're going to see some split micro because you see this gap in player control. I'm assuming these three uh, these three brigades belong to this reserve corps that deployed here. Um, actually, we can we can tell so because you see all these blue lines in the ground. Um, this replay is from this player's perspective, so we're actually watching from the perspective of the reserve player. So yes, indeed, these are not controlled by the reserve player, and that does mean that their micro is kind of split, and also they can't manage this as best as, as they should. Perhaps what should happen is this French player should pull back, this line should reorient here, straight line dead across. And then, that, yeah, they may, they may even be doing that, yeah, and then, mm-hmm. Let's see. 28 minutes left in the game. How are we looking? Ooh, that six-pound gun. Doing a good job here. Let's fast forward a little bit. See if we can get some decisive action going on here. Because I think the fighting has reached a little bit of a lull. It looks like on the left. Prussians getting attrited. The commitment of these reserves is allowing this player to really concentrate their army. And it looks like the uh, element of the Prussians on this side did carry this village, actually. So it looks like the Prussians are now winning. No, 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 no. This is the village. That's the objective. Oh, so it appears that the Prussians were pushed back. Oh, so there was a counterattack on this flank that we missed by looking over here. Interesting. Oh, oh man. What a wild ride. Yeah, the Prussians pulling back. If I were the Prussians, I'd even say uh, pull back to uh, this tree line here. This is really unnecessary ground. You're not really going to make a big... If, if, I, if I were the Prussian team, what I'd be thinking right now is, okay, where is the enemy the weakest? On the left. Everyone should hold their position and avoid engagement. The French are going to win this because they've got the quality and the manpower. Fresh units fighting a tritted, even though they got reserves. I would say avoid engagement... Turn the left flank, storm this, move your general up, keep that battery firing at that hill. This is, I would say, the weak part of the French line. If you can isolate this house, commit your reserves forward, this is the spot that can be turned, especially before these conscripts get in position and this young guard. Now the question is, are the Prussians going to see that? As we can see, the line of battle extends the whole length of the map. And as we noted before, now the French really don't have terribly many reserves. They've got some here. <coughs> Excuse me. But the Prussians, I would wager, oh, this is a prime opportunity to move forward. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Prussians losing time. Valuable, valuable time. Really hammering this unit. And these carabineers are perhaps even a misplacement of troops, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, by giving the opportunity for these two brigades to open fire, what they're doing is letting stray shots hit these two other brigades and back in reserve. So, see that? That was a guy died who died from a overshot. 
accidentally extending the range of these two units by giving them something to shoot at. Damn, dude, look at that. Jesus. Christ almighty. What a terrifying method of war. Whoa. Yeah, now they now they figured out what they're doing. Yeah, this Prussian player is, is the most important player on the field right now, and they don't realize it. Grinding advance, a very grinding advance. The Prussians are holding on. It's a pr uh, they got some reserves that they're committing, but so are the French. And the French are feeling cautious here. Worried, perhaps? Concerned over casualties, dare I say? Yeah, casualties sustained. Yeah, you could say that again. I think the French player here doesn't realize that they could probably turn the flank if they moved the old guard over here and kept their general dismounted moving up with the front line. They could probably turn the Prussian flank. This player's doing a good job. This reserve player, yeah, you can see it's reserve because they you can see the blue lines. Yeah, that this this army. Oh, and it looks like they did do the thing. They fused their reserves. Yeah, so this player this player oblique marched to the right. Uh this player condensed left, and there we go. The micro problem is solved. Sorry, I have a fire engine going past. Woo! Sorry, I just want to let that go by before I continued my rants, my ravings. Six-pound battery, where are you shooting? Oh, and the game seems to smooth out, to have smoothed out for the most part, which is very nice. Oh, it's a three-pound battery. Oh, and it's a mostly fresh three-pound battery. Oh, very interesting. So they've got a six-pound battery that they moved up. Jesus. Yeah, let's see where they're shooting. Oh, that's a high shot. <laughs> Famous Prussian artillery accuracy. Yeah, they're overshooting. But is the overshooting hitting this? Yeah, maybe. They killed the limber, I guess. Cool. Yeah, oh, oh, finally some action here on the right. The Prussian player. Now, that they, again, big, 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 big mistake. His general is not forward, and he's losing men on the attack. See, you can't, not to shit on this player, right? Like the man in the arena. You know, you might see things, and you might not see things. And, wow, Jesus. That are, that's the enfilade. Wow, look at this enfilade. Holy shit. Oh, my God. That's See, this is the thing, right? I'll, on the one hand, I'll say this is great. On the other hand, I'll say they got a problem. And, and excellent shooting on behalf of the artillery. My apologies. The lovely mailman had a package for me. So anyway, yeah, this player on the right is lucky right now. And it looks like his general has finally picked up on what he needs to do. See, look at the difference in morale here. Although the difficulty is he's sending in a tired unit. Are they inspired? I think he inspired them. So now he's going to send them in. Oh, yeah, now we're sending in two more units. Okay, yeah, see, this is what should have happened, is that the entire army should have fallen upon us in unison. But that artillery is really going to continue to play a huge role, and you can even see, like, the attrition here from the enfilade fire is insane. That battery really is quite decisive. Whoa. Jesus. What's going on here on the left? Sorry about that, by the way. I do apologize for having to step away for a second. Ha <laughs> ha! The Prussian player concentrating on one flank. Mm, this Prussian player, I don't know. It's, he's, he's trying to make something happen, and I appreciate it, but he's trying to make bricks with that clay is what it looks like. How are we looking over here? Hmm... 
All quiet. All quiet. Just moving on the flanks right now. Yeah, just keep throwing numbers in here because the French don't have the reserves to deal with it. Prussians got to rely on their numbers in the flanks. And you could see where the uh, reserves are. It's very telling. All the reserves are basically on this side of the battle for the Prussians. Same thing with the French. But the French really don't have reserves. Whatever they lose, they're not getting back. And the Prussians are definitely cored over here. And I think it's a mistake on this French player's part to not um, try to match them. This old guard unit should be on the left. And they kind of missed their opportunity to outflank. And now this Prussian player is kind of spinning the... Uh, the script a little bit. I wonder... I wonder why. I would also say, too, perhaps these players should fall back and fuse the line at this angle here. Curve it. Give the Prussians the town, because the town is breaking up their ability to form a line. As you can see, these grenadiers stuck in the street, not really able to deploy meaningfully. Meanwhile, the Prussians are just going to whittle down the French, uh, French left. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Very curious game. This is the most interesting part of the battle. Right here. This attack column has repulsed numerous assaults by the Prussians, and I think it's specifically because this player just does not have their general next to the charge. And that is a huge problem. They should be sending in wave after wave, and they're giving this French player time to deploy and figure out what their defensive line should be. Ooh, the French player going in here. Seeing if it might be worth it. Oh no, I, I was mistaken. The reserves are still over here. They actually have grown further apart. So it looks like he's staying on the low ground with his reserves so that way his artillery can fire overhead. Can't blame him. Solid tactic. Games like this are always fascinating because when you have players who show restraint, and I think that's why, although this may seem at the outset to be a air quotes boring and air quotes game, because there's not massive fighting going on in the center, it really shows that idea of force preservation, right? Like the French have this line. Look at how perfect this line is. These are four different players. Now on the left, it's messy. And they actually, it seems like they're trying to do a, a charge here. Ooh. Oh man, yeah, they might even crack that. Yeah, look at that. Oh man. See, this is how you do a charge. This is how you do a charge. Now they're going to go for Blucher. These musketeers are going to try to intercept, maybe. Forming into a quick line. Do they, are they loaded? Tell me they're loaded. Oh, no. Eh, whatever. Oh, Blucher's on foot. Oh, shit. That might be Blucher. Oh, who just died? Oh, shit. How did he die? Looks like... Oh, hit by a cannonball. Look at that. Look at that line. Where did that come from? Oh, it looks like it was ricocheted. Oh my god, a cannonball from the three-pound battery shot Laryl's general. But it looks like they just killed Blucher. Yeah. Yeah, Blucher was just killed. Wow, so a... <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So a cannonball bounced, killed the French general. Although his staff is still there, though, so... Oh no, that general's alive. Where was the other one? Oh, here he is. Here he is. This must be him. Nope, he's fresh. Where did that general... Ah, this must be him. Nope. Let's click this thing. Well, oh, here he is. The staff is still there, and as long as the general's staff is still there, the morale debuff isn't as bad as a routing general. Um... But again, as I was saying before I kind of got caught up in the moment, wow, this French player, there we go. This is what the French player needed to do. The very aggressive push with the bayonet. There you go. Well done. The initiative has been regained. Anyway, um, what I like about games like this, as I was saying, is although it seems boring, right? No one's fighting here. You wouldn't commit troops to be engulfed in a firefight unless you thought you were going to win, right? That's how you have to calculate a battle, right? The math of the conflict. 
are you going to gain something by spending X number of lives? Too many players run into the situation where they just put men into a firefight and let them blast away at each other like a bunch of toddlers fighting with nerf guns. And it's just not how this shit would go. If you didn't think you could get a positive result out of something, you wouldn't we risk the loss of life. Another now general? Oh, he must have been caught by a, a fucking ball. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, he was shot. Jesus. A lot of generals dying in rapid succession. But anyway, yeah, it's like, while this may look pretty boring, the, the action here is so strategic. The aggressive push with the left to try to finish off Blucher's wing. The assault here on this side with this core of Prussians. Now doing something totally different. Have they moved? It looks like they've moved their guns. And not only have they moved their guns, but it also looks like what they're doing is they're going to try to overextend the French line with their reserves falling into position. So instead of going for this house, what they're going to do is try to turn the French flank using the last 15 minutes of the game and turn the position. Very interesting. That's a textbook strategy. The big question, is there a part of this river that they can cross? Is there another crossing down river? I don't think... Uh, mm, that looks to be a crossing. So they're going to have to, in 15 minutes, walk all the way down here and come back up. That looks to be a tall order. Uh, is this a crossing? This could be a crossing here. I don't know. Yeah, it really depends on how far down river the crossing is. I don't know where the next one is. This would have been the closest and probably the best. Again, this house is really isolated. I think this is an unnecessary amount of maneuver. What they should have done was just have their general forward and charged in a column into this house with fresh troops. Um, I'm, I don't think this is the best use of time and men, but hey, you know what? I'm not playing. I'm just enjoying. So now, because of the bayonet push on the left flank here, we're seeing the French able to envelop. Um, the reserve corps is able to really go in and start hammering away at the Prussians. And that morale, because one general's death and the other general's death, um, it's just tough to hold on here. If I was this Prussian player, I would collapse all the way back here. I would rely on this house. Um, it really comes down to time. Can the French, can the Prussians hold on to their points and secure one more in the remaining 13 minutes of the game? And again, to be clear, as I was saying before, you know, not a lot of action happening throughout the line. It looks like there's a recommitment in the center. Try to take some pressure off of this flank. This is a very strategic game, and I really appreciate what they're doing, because what they're doing is minimizing unnecessary casualties and only acting on where they think they can win. This is really good gameplay. How many games have you seen where it's just players banging away at each other for an hour straight, not really any strategy, just, you know, going in, having a war of attrition, whatever. This has been a very strategic game, and that's why I like it. It looks like it's pretty one-dimensional, right? They formed a line of battle and just kind of duked it out across a straight line, but really, it wasn't. There was a lot of movement on this flank. There's a lot of uh, opportunities and missed opportunities going on here. Um, the center play with the French bayonet uh, charge up the center, trying to secure this river. Um, a lot of really good gameplay going on here, and it looks like the Prussians are finally going to try to use uh, weight of numbers but knowing their luck, Sharn Horse will be hit by a spent ball, so, you know. Although they do have artillery advantage in this area, and as long as they can keep their artillery above the heads of their own men, they can win. Uh, part of me wonders if it might have been better to... Oh, yeah, there they go. Limber up this foot battery here and move it forward before the infantry moves up. It might have been moving uh, uh, too quickly to have the uh, infantry move forward like this. Oh, do they... Uh, hold on. Yep, go figure. And then over here on the right, looks like the Prussians are finally making a, a charge for this house. But the problem is, is the general is still way back here. And this French general is way up here. So even though, even though the French garrison is outnumbered probably 3 to 1 at this point. 62 versus, I mean, yeah, 3 if not 4 to 1. Look at that morale difference. And that's because the general is nearby. And this one isn't. This player is making a big mistake by not having their general so far up. They are finally flexing these reserves, though. This is kind of an unnecessary commitment, because all this player needs to do is just watch this crossing. They could maybe move forward and push this unit back, but it's kind of an unnecessary thing. All of these brigades should be over here. This artillery being here is not doing terribly much. Maybe it would have been better to keep it on this height, firing enfilade down in this line. You remember seeing all the damage that was doing. So now the French are able to collapse in on the Prussians, who, without their backbone of morale, are really struggling. 
Prussians making a bit of a tactical blunder here by not garrisoning this house. I would make the argument. I know they don't have morale, so they've got to play really cautiously. But you know what? If you're going to have to fight for points, you really want to fight for points, you know? And your men are going to hold longer inside of a house than outside of it. Although, there's still a lot of Prussians, so let's not, you know... Let's not call them down and out when there's still thousands of them. They are vacating this center area, though. They're going to pull back. I would say maybe form a secondary line on this road. If they have any artillery left on this flank, it would be good to fall back to it. But I don't know if they do. I haven't seen any gun, any cannons firing. Um, yeah, the French are able to go into this house. Still a fight going on for it. Looks like the Prussians have taken it. Again, very. Uh, look at how many men uh, on this flank are being deployed. You've got uh, 200, 500, 600 and change. You've got about 1,000 men over here, roughly, that are not being committed to the fight. They could be better used over here. General finally moving up, and that's going to make a difference. This house is going to become Prussian, which is good because it'll counterbalance a lot of the stuff happening over there. Now, the French, here's the problem. By committing, they are putting a lot of their gas on the line here, and while they are inflicting casualties, they don't have reserves. Every French loss is un irreplaceable. And meanwhile, the Prussians have three fresh brigades that they're moving in. Granted, it's going to be difficult for them to hold ground. They do still have artillery in the form of this six-pound battery. I wonder if this player knows that they're not on the gun. If I were them, I'd be telling these guys to start loading canister as swiftly as possible. This building has fallen to the enemy. Yep, that'll be that left flank there. Yep. Jesus. Oh, they, oh, I guess they, they garrisoned the right. That was what happened. Yep, there we go. Cool. I see the morale going up. The Brunswickers in there and the Musketeers. So now the French have to storm this. Um, they can do it. They can really do it. If I was this player, I'd say make a bowl here and rely on the artillery firing canister to hold the ground. Oh, this gun is still not firing. I wonder if it's glitched. Nope. Mm, maybe. Yeah, it's a problem. This is a problem. Ooh, countercharge by the Prussians. My neighbor is sneezing across the street. Gotta love it. Oh, they've pulled back. Okay, so the left has redeployed, pulling back. I think there's just a lot of uh, stuff in the air out here that could be better used over here. Prussians are holding together somewhat, but they're having a tough time staying together, you know what I mean? And if you look here, it's like they're trying to reform in the face of the enemy. Like, you can't do that. You have to pull back and give yourself some time and some space. Yeah, see, look at what this French player is doing. They're going to move their general up, they're going to have him nearby, and they're going to rush this house all together with troops that are not tired. Active, yes, but not tired. This is how you take a house. Prussians finally cracking the French center. So the Prussians, if they play their cards right... Ooh, what are we doing here? Ooh, conscripts charging a battery? Oh, shit. Conscripts taking out three-pounder. That was a good use of conscripts. I approve. Those guys are going to rout, but they killed a lot of gunners on the way in. Again, just an unnecessary application of firepower. You don't really need this side of the hill. This gun could be better served going here, blasting straight ahead. Now, if they have a general nearby, they got to run him over here to save that battery from running, because that battery can really make a huge difference on this side. Left flank, yeah, the Prussians. Tenuous grasp. Tenuous grasp. French morale is making the difference here. Jesus, look at this. A very unsteady line. They're holding, and you know what? That's the best you can ask. And of course, the second I say that, we're going to start seeing a mass route, because that's going to cascade to left and right. Um, they're holding, and that's the most you can... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's that's a division right there. Gone. Boop. And then that'll... Yep, it's going to start mass routing. Although they may come back, depending. Yep, he's back. Nope. Oh, I hope they don't just keep tagging each other. That always sucks. Yeah, this player might be routed off the field. This might be a total break of the core. The right flank may... Alexa play may it be by Enya. 
Mm, very sticky situation. This is a problem. This is a bit of a catastrophe. If a general was alive, this wouldn't be happening. Although, the see, this is the thing, is you got success on this flank, and then you've got a really difficult chance on this side. And this is the the, the, the difference that morale has on a, on a game. Yeah, this, this, this Prussian player just has to start full sending it into this town. There are five minutes left in this game. If they're going to equalize it, they got to do it now, because let's check out the points. Um, the French have one, two, three, four, five, and six, because that house is blue. The Prussians have one, two, three. If they can get that four, and if they can get through the center, they'll have five. So really, the, the Prussians, the French strength is on the left, is on the left. What the Prussians need to do is force their way into here. And then they need to force this village. If they could do that, they'll win the game. That's the Prussian objective right now. Whatever's left of this Prussian army is just a speed bump. This player should play for time. They should distract as much of the French left as possible. And I mean the Prussian. The Prussian player on this flank is effectively destroyed. They should use their remaining troops to hold up the French as long as they can on the left flank. And then what should happen is this Prussian side here needs to swamp this town and blow a hole through this to get into there. And it looks like we're about to see that. I sure hope a general's nearby. Scharnhorst is nearby in the front line, no less. Oh yeah, the assault column led by the 8th Life Regiment slamming into the Fusilier unit. That might be good because it looks like the French are going to try to st st uh, stem the tide. They might not be there in time. The Prussians may be able to carry this and then reform. Ooh, this is a this is a moment when it really all comes down to it. Uh, four minutes left in the game. Can the Prussians do it? Scharnhorst being committed, making the French route. Yep, yeah, this is it. This is the break that the Prussians needed. Although now the French are just gonna have to figure out what's going on. Yeah, now now the Prussians have an open door here. They could secure this town if they can put a hold on this town, and if they can grab this town, they're good fight over this house is so ridiculous. All of these infantry units need to be committed to this house right now. It's actually really frustrating to watch. Yeah, everything needs to be thrown to that house. Anything not being committed to that house is a bit of a waste of time. This battery doing a great job. Yeah, there we go. Now here's the press. This is the problem is the French left did a great job. And I think it was not, not because the Prussians mismanaged their right. I think it was just because so many other generals died on the right that it collapsed. Um, but it's just with time being the way it is and kind of the way the game is going. Um, as long as the Prussians can hold on to this town, they'll have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. If they can grab this town, they've got five points. It's coming down to the last three minutes of the game. Woof. Aw, oh, man. Whoever this player is, you got to throw everything into this house now. I would say this town is contested. My official, my official opinion as a neutral person is this contested, because you've got three almost fresh brigades of infantry sitting right on it, basically outside of it. You've got Prussians in the house, more Prussians in the house than French, although the more French are going in. Like, this is a very contested town. This might be a stalemate of a game. Oh, who died? Oh, shit. That's not good. That means that this town could be in jeopardy. As long as this Prussian stays alive, they can possibly get that town. We're going to take tally of uh, points at the last minute of the game. Jesus, yeah, look at that. Let's take a let's quick survey of the bodies here. Oh, man. Heavy fighting here. A lot of the fighting was over here. You could see. Jesus. Wow. Come on. There you go. You got one minute left. Two minutes left. Full send into the house. You got to do it. He <laughs> was like, please. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. Minute and 37 left. Oh, did they lose the house? They got the house. Okay, that's a Prussian point. Did they get this town? Not yet. Oh, did the Prussians get routed? Oh, the, the Prussians appear to have been routed over here. Oh yeah, Scharnhorst was routed. Scharnhorst was routed. Okay, so... That is an interesting development here. 
That is a very interesting development. Alright, so let's slow-mo the game here. Take our time. We got a minute left in slow-mo. It's really two minutes. Uh, one Prussian point, and I'm going to say they got this, 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 I mean, they have, there's only Prussians in this town, so it's hard to say the French have it, but the French most definitely have everything else. They've got one, two, three, four, five. The Prussians are going to have one, two, three, four. Um, and, you know, again, there's more, the French are closer to this town that's kind of behind this line here, and the Prussians don't really have anything on it. Uh, I would hazard to say that maybe this Prussian player, who I think really... And I'm not assigning blame, blame to anyone because, I mean, at the end of the game, this player was the one who had their army left. Um, this town could have been taken quicker. And if this player had just over, uh, basically overcharged the center, they could have grabbed this and that would have won the game. I think this here was the crucial moment. Um, this action over here on the right, Blucher dying and uh, the Prussians continue to engage on the right. Blucher dying and then uh, Chris's general being killed here. Um, the other Prussian general being killed uh, really uh, took the game. Um, there were a lot of opportunities here for the Prussians to win. Um, there were also a lot of opportunities for the French to win faster. I think both sides committed about the same amount of mistakes. To me, what it really came down to was the Prussian left wing. I think if the Prussian left wing had realized what was going on sooner, if they had done this 10 minutes ago, this game would be much different because these men could have been flowing into that town and that would have meant that the French seizure and time spent over here um, would have been for naught, and then the Prussians could have pivoted the game to basically be hold on to here and make a defensive line on this road, and then you're turning the axis of combat, so that way uh, you are forcing the French to cross this river, you're forcing them to charge into this house, and then you're also forcing them to charge what would have been a battery uh, that was here. I don't know where it went, but anyway, yeah, I think um, that was really it. This was the problem over here. If this town was taken sooner, this would have been a, a much more... Um, German-speaking game, I think. But the French, you know, the French just did really, really, really friggin' well keeping their reserves, keeping their line of combat, um, or their line of engagement where it needed to be and getting it out of where it didn't. As I said before, people tend to get frustrated with games where there's not a lot of movement. I find that anticipation really fascinating because, as I said before, some players think, oh, if I'm not shooting, if my guys aren't blasting, I'm not playing the game. It's like, no, 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 by holding the enemy where you are and forcing them to be deployed where you are, you are taking away men from other parts of the battlefield. And what that's doing is giving your other players and teammates opportunities to act on their own and maybe exploit weaknesses in the enemy line in their sector that could be reinforced with units that are actually deployed to your side. So by being where you are, you're keeping men that could be used elsewhere from being where they could be or should be. So all in all, I think despite the lull in fighting in the center, I find that to be very historically accurate and awesome. And I would even go so far as to say... Um, uh, really interesting given the fact that today is the first day of Gettysburg because in Gettysburg, and I actually did a live tweet in the Discord for this mod, uh, like kind of like hour by hour what's happening, day one Gettysburg. It was kind of amateurish, but it was fun. Um, on the first day of Gettysburg, uh, fighting began really about like 6 or 7 a.m. and continued on till about 11.30 and then resumed at around 12, 12.30. Um, and so there was a lull in fighting for about anywhere between a half an hour and an hour where both sides, yes, there was skirmishing, but the really heavy engagement had kind of stopped. And you saw that here, right? Like thousands of men, tens of thousands of men just standing, looking at each other, catching their breath while the commanders reassess what they wanted to do. Very historically accurate. Never let anyone tell you that games where men aren't fighting are boring because that's the strategy element. You don't need gunfire to have a cool game. You need strategy to have a fun game. Otherwise, you're just watching men getting into a boxing match, brawling needlessly, and then all you're doing is saying, ooh, ah, look, gunshots, how cool is that? It's the nuance and the strategy and the maneuver that makes this sort of warfare fascinating. So I hope you enjoyed this battle as much as I did. Clearly, I had a great time watching it. Um, we'll just fast forward on these last 20 seconds and assess the statistics. It'll be interesting to see from the perspective of the Reserve Corps how many kills they, or I'm sorry, how many casualties they inflicted on the enemy. Um, again, you know, this style of warfare really isn't about casualty uh, rates. It's more so about maneuver um, because, you know, not for nothing, but there's still a lot of Prussians in the field. There's arguably a core of Prussians still here. And uh, while they did route a lot over here, um, I don't know necessarily if the French would be in a position to turn that flank. So let's run some numbers here quick, as we always do. Prussians, okay, so uh, under Jack was 4-3, four, 4-4, four, four, 
plus 4870 plus 4054 plus 3755. Uh, 17,000 almost on the nose Prussians. 17,000 Prussians. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. That was the French. 17,000 French. That's a pretty big number. Meanwhile, the Prussians... 5924 five, plus 4250 plus 5788 plus 6218. You're looking at 22,000 Prussians. So the French outnumbered by almost, actually they are, yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, outnumbered by more than 5,000 men, a little over, a hair over 5,000 men, uh, effectively a core in this game, more, um, Prussians than French, but yet the French prevailed. And I specifically attribute that to the tactics employed, uh, by the French, the sluggishness of the Prussian command on uh, key moments of the battlefield. Again, that flank, I think if that flank had moved faster, that really would have jeopardized the French, um, the Prussians did a great job, though, and again, I can't really criticize the team as a whole because everyone made mistakes, I think, be them French or Prussian. It just came down to which mistakes mattered more, right? Like, a lot of this warfare doesn't come down to what did you do right, but rather what did you do wrong? And, you know, I lose games all the time. Um, I, I don't win every game I play, and uh, I think that's kind of the key, right, is to remember that the man in the arena always is going to do something different than what the best and most optimal plan is. So... Taking a look at the kills here, yeah, I could see really, wow. So this, whatever unit this was really bought their weight. Killed literally a brigade's worth of men, 230 on the nose. Lost about 20% casualties. That's pretty pretty standard, actually. That's a, that's a historical standard, 20% casualties. A lot of armies lost 20%. Um, pretty high attrition rates, if we look. Uh, no one outright annihilated it is what it looks like, though. Yeah, no outright annihilation in the French Reserve Corps. And I think that speaks to the fact that they arrived at the battle uh, when it was so well developed. They didn't need to go through all of the rigmarole that they did. Um, so, you know, it really pays having that sort of a fresh uh, force arrive on the battlefield, especially when you have a well, a well managed uh, army overall that can minimize damage but absorb a lot of the enemy fire and really kind of attrit them and force them to deploy reserves in the way they did. So great battle overall. That was the Battle of um, Auerstadt. I don't think it was... It might have been Austerlitz. I can't remember. Whatever it was, uh, a fantastic battle. Uh, thanks to Jack Lerrell, Hans, that's this guy in Discord, uh, Kane, Commissar Kane, uh, Christ, a.k.a. Chris, Dan, Pipax, and Chariot Sasha. Thanks for sending this in. This was a lot of fun to watch. A pleasure as always. And um, yeah, let's stay tuned. Subscribe if you enjoyed this. This is Field Commander Napoleon for Napoleon Total War Darth Mod. The map was by the NTW3 team. And uh, just again, to plug my own war game that will be coming out with soon. I'll do another video on that later when we get further into development, but it will be called Armchair Generals. Have a great day. Stay hydrated. And on this day, Gettysburg, 159 years ago. Have a good time, everybody. Bye-bye.